Ladies and gentlemen, Jewel Erickson Eck is at it again. Another season in which he continues to up his statistical bests in pretty much every category there is. We'll talk about his outrageously good contract as well as his continued ability to up the ante every season. All on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Brandon Duham, and this is Locked On Wild. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any of our new episodes throughout the week. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we talk about Jewel Erickson Eck continuing to push higher every single statistical category every single season, and he's at it again so far here in 2023-2024. We'll talk about his contract, and we'll talk about where he can continue to slot in for this wild team that uh, is just hoping to uh, continue with some uh, strong play from a couple of their centers as the season unfolds. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. You can download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. I mean, at this point in the season, we have seen a ton. We've seen Kirill Kaprizov get off to a slow start. We've seen Matt Boldy go through a dry spell. And it seems like all of that happening, and there's been one player that has been remarkably constant through the just ups and downs that we've seen so far this Minnesota Wild season, and that is Jewel Erickson Eck, who we've talked about at length um, over the last few seasons about what he brings to the table as uh, one of the best, if not the best, center that the Minnesota Wilds currently have on the roster. And he's at it again so far this season. So looking at his stats so far, 14 goals, and seven assists, 21 total points in 26 games. And if you extrapolate that and push that out to the course of a uh, regular season, um, he's going to continue to shatter the mark in uh, just a ton of different categories um, so far this season. I mean, the 14 goals through 26 games, he's on pace as of right now, to shatter his previous career high in terms of goals, which was 26, because he's currently on pace for 44 goals and 22 assists through a full 82-game season. And so that would shatter his previous best in goals, which is 26, as I just mentioned. His previous best in points was 61 from last year, so he would find a way to up that uh, in addition to upping the goals. His face-off percentage has increased. Now, it's a slight increase, but it is still an increase over what he had what he did last year to 49.5%. Uh, he has blocked 23 shots in 26 games. His career high in blocked shots is 55. He has 46 hits through 26 games. His previous best for hits is 138. Now, he's probably not going to hit that mark, but he's still going to put himself amongst one of the best seasons he's ever had from a hits perspective. But that's not even all. His Corsi 4 percentage of 55.4 is a career best besting his uh, 2021-2022 two season of 53.6. And you look at what he has done in terms of expected goals. He has an expected goals for so far this year of 14.7, which extrapolated out over the course of a full regular season. 
His expected goals would be just over 45, which would be the second best he has ever had in a season. But look at some of these other numbers so far through 26 games. He's averaging a half a goal per game, over a half a goal per game. Shatters his previous best. He's averaging 0.81 points per game, which is higher than last year for his previous best. He's averaging 3.62 shots per game, which is best over last year, which was at 3.17. He has already accumulated 2.6 point shares, uh, which is the number of points contributed by a player both offensively and defensively. He's at 1.9 offensively. His previous career high is 4. He's at 0.7 defensively. His previous career high is 2.1 from last year. And so well on his way to uh, reestablishing that mark as well. But that is not even the tip of the iceberg for where Eric Sinek ranks amongst the best to do it in the NHL. Uh, expected goals. Jewel Eric Sinek is currently in the top five in the NHL with 13.8. He is fifth in the NHL. Fifth in the NHL, let me repeat that, with 13.8 expected goals so far this season. And this is, there There are no sorts of uh, stipulations here. Um, found this, this statistic at moneypuck.com, and the minimum ice time to uh, to qualify is is not a factor here. He, he has 521 minutes on the ice so far, which is plenty to put him next to guys like Austin Matthews, next to guys like Zach Hyman, Sidney Crosby, and Jake Gensel. Those are the only guys that are in front of Jewel Erickson X so far this season from an expected goals percentage. And if you want even a little bit further indication as to where he's at, he is tied with Brock Besser at 13.8 expected goals and has played two fewer games than Besser has. So not only is he fifth in the NHL in expected goals, but if you go to the area where he has been excelling the most so far this season, in those high danger opportunities, and he's even higher up on the list amongst the uh, best in the NHL. He's fourth in the NHL in high danger expected goals at 8.25, trailing only Sam Reinhart, Zach Hyman, and Braden Point, and again, just ahead of Brock Besser. And so for all of the other ups and downs offensively that we've seen for this team, Jewel Erickson Eck just continues to just continue to get better every season, and he's on his way to having a season like Ryan Hartman had two years ago where he dropped 35 goals and it kind of came out of nowhere. But here's the difference. Here's the part of it that's different is Eric Sinek has been building to this. He's been building up to this point over the last few seasons. And yes, you can say the increase in offense is a byproduct of all those other guys not being able to produce as effectively. But I think that is what makes it even more important is there's been more pressure on him to score and to help this team kind of navigate through some of these offensive issues. And he just continues to get it done. And so it's almost more impressive that there has been more of a spotlight on Jewel Erickson Eck to be one of the primary goal scorers for this team. And he just continues to do it. He is just an absolute menace on the power play and has six power play goals already this season. Uh, and so you look at how he has helped this team in the power play department and his numbers there continue to, uh, to get better and better as well. And so there just is no area. He's got six power play goals right now. His previous career best was 12, which he did back to back seasons, 2021, 2022 and 2022, 2023. 
Now his previous best for even strength goals in a season was 19 back in 2020, 2021. All of that's within reach. All of those previous bests are within reach for Eric Sinek so far this season. And it's not going to shock me in the slightest if he resets every category. He's a cinch at this point, barring injury. And yes, I did knock on my desk. He's a cinch at this point for a 30-goal season, unless he just absolutely falls off the face of the earth. He's a cinch for his first 30-goal season. He's on pace for 44 this year. He just continues to improve and improve and improve and make his contract an absolute bargain. So for all of the frustration we have with some of the other extensions that we've seen, Getting Jewel Erickson Eck locked into his has been an absolute bargain for this team. And we'll we'll talk about just how far above what he's currently being paid he continues to trend as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. A new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities, whether it be Jewel Erickson Eck getting to 40 goals this season or the Minnesota Wild eventually somewhere down the line hoisting the Stanley Cup. You can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. It is so easy to take your pick as to whether players like Connor McDavid, Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, or Nathan McKinnon will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. You can set your lineup in as little as 60 seconds. And if you're a fan of other sports, you can play daily fantasy NFL, NBA, MLB, and college football on Sleeper. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, as we mentioned, we've got Brandon Duhame coming on the show this week. So uh, if you have a question in particular that you'd like to ask Duhame, if you are uh, following along with us on YouTube, just reply in the comments to this video with your question for, uh, for Duhame. And uh, we'll see how many we can get asked throughout the course of his appearance. Uh, That'll probably be for Thursday's show. So just in the comments, just reply with any questions you have. If you are listening um, via audio, just shoot us a uh, shoot us a message on Twitter. Um, Just just add us on Twitter and uh, ask your question there as well. And we'll compile and uh, try to get to as many as we can for Duhame, who will be the first regularly appearing uh, guest in Locked on Wild history from a player perspective. So very excited for that coming up uh, later here this week. But let's get back to the discussion on Jewel Erickson Eck, who continues to just continues to just get better every single season. And from a contract perspective, you can't argue with $5.25 million a year for a guy who does as many different things as Jewel Erickson Eck does. Uh, the Athletic has put together their uh, player cards for uh, players throughout the course of the entirety of the NHL. And what this, what this tries to do is to evaluate and value how particular players have performed throughout the course of the season. And Erickson Eck currently sitting with a current net rating offensively and defensively of plus 13, which is near the top of the list. Although the three, um, the three, the big three for the avalanche McKinnon, McCarr and Rantanen all at the top of the list. uh, As of now, 
but Erickson Eck is 12th in the Central Division uh, in terms of uh, net rating. His forecast net rating is plus 10, plus 8 on offense, and plus 2 on defense. But the thing that I want to key in on here is that market value for what Erickson Eck does. And let's consider all the different things that Jewel Erickson Eck does for this team. He is their number one faceoff guy. So plays in the top six on a consistent basis. And that has been far more underscored by the fact that under John Hines, I think he has led the team in minutes six times of the seven games that uh, that the Wild have played under John Hines. And the only other time, the only time that he didn't was in one of the blowout games. Uh, I believe it was against Nashville. So he continues to lead the team in minutes. So he's playing in a ton of critical areas and is your best face-off guy. He's your net front guy in the power play. He plays on the penalty kill. And there just there isn't a spot that he does not occupy for this team that isn't a critical one. And so you factor that in with the fact that he has so achieved he is so performed at a high level this season that as it currently stands his market value according to the athletic 8.5 million dollars and so eric Zanek by himself is generating 3.2 million dollars of surplus value for the wilds producing the way that he has um as he continues to just continues to add pieces to his game um responding to the challenge of the offense you know key players struggling at points through the start of the season and he responds by getting to the net more he responds by taking more shots and he responds by scoring more goals so he continues to add value to his contract and if we look at it here in his age 26 season $5.25 million. And so at age 26, there's still a few more seasons in which he could theoretically get better if he if he hasn't yet hit his prime. And even if he has, he's still a, a very good player for this team. Now, is he amongst the, the ranks of the best centers in the league? Probably not. But again, if you factor in the fact that he could at age 27 and age 28 still get better, that's where all of a sudden you uh, you start to see um, market improvement. And it's so fun, too, to see Eric Sinek, considering how much of a struggle it was for him to get going. And he was always a defensive, kind of defense first guy in his first few seasons in the league. He wasn't somebody who had a ton in the offense department. I mean, he his first full season in the league, he scored six goals. Then he had seven, then he had eight, and then all of a sudden he bumped up to 19, then 26, and then 23. But he's continued to work at it. He has continued to put his time in and has continued to consistently up his game in critical areas. And Michael Russo pointed this out the other day. In 21 of the 26 games so far this season, he has at least three shots. And so he's not shying away from those moments either. If he has the opportunity with the puck, he's letting it fly. And he is generating a ton of instances, a ton of opportunities in the high danger areas. And so it's the kind of thing, too, where if you're getting to the net, and this is, I think, where he's starting to rub off on some of the players on this team, as we'll talk about next. If you get to the net and you're scoring goals from in close, that's the kind of thing that doesn't go into a prolonged slump. 
if you're not hitting from outside and you get to the net, you can cash in on deflections. You can cash in on rebounds. You can cash in on just getting a goalie out of his elements, out of his area, and just tapping the puck home. And so a huge credit to the work that Jewel Erickson Eck continues to put in for this team is the fact that he's leading them in goals and he is on pace to once again shatter every statistical category that he that he can. But we're starting to see it rub off on some other players on this team, which is super encouraging as well and is a huge indicator of just the kind of leadership that Jewel Erickson Eck brings to the table as well. And so to finish today's episode, we'll talk about his place amongst the core for this team. We'll talk about his place amongst the leadership group, and we'll talk about how he has impacted the likes of Matt Boldy and Marco Rossi as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And for the YouTube crowd, I'm not sure what's going on with my lighting situation. You may have noticed that it keeps fluctuating between um, hot and cold. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, continuing today's episode, let's dive into Jewel Erickson Eck rubbing off on a couple of key pieces for this Minnesota Wild team. I think first and foremost, his inseparable line mate, Matt Boldy. We talked we heard John Hines talk about this after the game against Seattle, in which Matt Boldy is starting to really hone some of his two-way game. And Hines said it's it's no it's in no small part due to what Jewel Erickson Eck continues to do and the way that he continues to kind of show the path as to how to do it effectively at the NHL level. Because let's consider this as well. For all of the things that Jewel Erickson Eck has done, he's also been a top 10 finalist for the Selkie Trophy three straight seasons. He peaked at fourth in 2020-2021, then was seventh in 2021-2022, and was ninth last year. And with the fact that Patrice Bergeron is uh, no longer going to be winning that on a regular basis, he figures to be in the conversation once again for the work that uh, he continues to do for this team. And the work that he has done has rubbed off on Matt Boldy because Erickson Eck doesn't strike us as one of those vocal types of leaders, but I think he is the perfect embodiment of the lead by example approach. We all know what happened last year. Broke his leg, blocking a shot against the Pittsburgh Penguins rehabbed like crazy to try to get himself in position to even take the ice in the uh, the series against the Dallas Stars. He did. It didn't work out. But the fact that he even got himself into position to do it speaks to just the type of rink rat that he is and the type of preparation that he puts in off the ice 
leads to him being able to make all those winning plays. And he just is such a pain to play against. And we're seeing a little bit of that rub off on Matt Boldy. We're seeing a little bit of that in Marco Rossi's game. Now, it was something that Rossi developed in Iowa last year was the the bristliness to his game and not being afraid to mix it up, not being able, not being afraid to go to the boards to win a puck battle, not being afraid to just, you know, shove somebody out of the way to mix it up after the play's done. Who does that remind you of? And so I I don't have any information on how those discussions went, but you'd be crazy to not think that Bill Guerin, when he said, when they talked to Marco Rossi and said, you know, we want you to kind of add a little bit more of that, of that toughness, that abrasiveness to your game. I would be willing to bet money that the guy that came up in the conversation as to who to emulate is the only guy that is further up on the center pecking order than him in Jewel Erickson Eck. And so Erickson Eck rubbing off on those two young players speaks to how much respect he has in this wild locker room. I know when Kirill Kaprizov was given the alternate captain, uh, that was... It came as a little bit of a surprise, but I think it speaks to the level of respect that the Wild have for what Kaprizov has done. But the guy that it seemed like made the most logical sense before Kaprizov was given it was Jewel Erickson Eck. He is, I think, the quintessential part of what this team wants like to a player, what they want them to be able to contribute on both sides of the ice. And Erickson Eck just is so consistently good in both areas. You regularly, you don't hardly ever see him get beat in critical situations. And if he does, he makes up for it on the other end of the ice. He has a short memory too, to where he can shake off a mistake or a goal allowed and can just impact the game in meaningful ways on the other side of the ice. And I got to feel like when John Hines was, was offered the job, he's pretty psyched to have that type of a center up at the top of the lineup that he can uh, unleash late in critical situations. And you know, you're going to get what you need uh, from Jewel Erickson. And so by and large this season, it, it's crazy to me too because we've seen like we've seen Erickson Eck have these just market improvements in all these different areas. And we keep saying, is it possible for him to do it again? And every season without fail, he says, yes. He says, yeah, I got you. I'll just, uh, I'll just go do it again and find a way to, uh, find a way to one up what I just did the previous season. And so, You want to look at some of the unsung heroes of what this wild team has been able to do so far this year. It's got to start with Jewel Erickson Eck, who has been outside of the the play of like Brock Faber and Marco Rossi, who has been their most consistent performer. He is an absolute warrior out there on the ice. And every opponent to a word, to a T, Every opponent he goes up against can't stand playing against him because it's such a it's such an uncomfortable experience. And it's because Erickson Eck is just so good at what he does. So even though this season has shown signs of improvement and isn't where anybody would want it to be, I think we can take huge solace in the fact that Jewel Erickson Eck is going to be a gigantic part of what this team does, not only this season, but next season, the year after that, the year after that, the year after that, and the year after that. And every season until his deal is done, which is at the end of the 2028-2029 season. That's a lot of good play for Jewel Erickson Atkins. By the time he's done, 
His name is going to be a lot higher on the list in terms of uh, Minnesota Wild centers. You can guarantee that. Um, he's He's got a long, long way to go. And I have a feeling we have not seen the best of Jewel Erickson Eck yet. So that, uh, that could get exciting if, uh, if he has any more that he can add to the table that he hasn't already done. So Jewel Erickson Eck appreciation episode that uh, will do it for today. Again, if you have any questions you'd like uh, aimed at Brandon Duhame, just leave them in the comments. I'll sift through and, uh, and accumulate what we get. And uh, we'll see how many we can get to with Duhaim. And uh, we'll put that in for uh, Thursday's episode of Locked on Wild. So keep an eye on that. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube if you have not already or on your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes and so you don't miss out on the great conversations every single day as part of the YouTube community. So make sure to follow along. And stick with Locked on Wild because we will keep you up to date on all things going on with the Minnesota Wild throughout the rest of the season. We've got new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.